On the PS Audio speakers, you've put a lot of time, more than anybody I've ever known in, in the years that I've been involved with speakers, into the design of the woofers. Mm -hmm. Talk, I mean, there, there's, um, you've got all kinds of stuff in that woofer that I've never even thought of. I mean, can you run us through the, the PS Audio woofers, how, how they're built, why you did it that way, and what kind of decisions you're making? Yeah, one of my formative experiences in audio, uh, you know, my father had a speaker company called Speaker Lab uh, in, in, in Seattle. Uh, it bought it in the early 80s. It had been around for about 10 years before that, but they built woofers in-house. And um, I grew up around the, the driver manufacturing stuff a little bit. And uh, one of my... Uh, you know, biggest learning experiences in the business was working for a company called Adire Audio, also in Seattle, right when I was graduating college. And that company was run by uh, a couple, uh, couple acoustics guys. Well, one was had been in the sonar industry, and another was had his PhD in in NMR, which is a like an MRI, it's nuclear magneto resonance spectroscopy, just genius level guy. Um, and they'd come up with some interesting concepts about how to optimize woofers. And one of them they actually got a patent on about 15 years ago was um, multiple magnetic air gaps. So in a, in a woofer, one of the, you know, we talked a little bit about it in the video about distortion, but one of the problem, main problems with woofers is, um, you know, excursion quadruples every octave you go down. So if, for a given woofer size, if you want to play the same SPL at 20 hertz as you do at 40 hertz, it's got to move four times, four times as much. not just double, yeah. uh, because it's constant acceleration down there. And um, so an excursion, it, you know, is the cause of a lot of nonlinearities in a woofer. So how do you optim? How do you, especially because you're getting out of the gap too, aren't you? Right. So the the interesting thing is there's uh, a bunch of tools to analyze this now, and um, there's there's a, a bunch of distortion measurement tools as well. But basically, um, they develop their own finite element analysis tools in order to look at the magnet system under power. What is it doing? And you know, there's a few different kinds of magnets in a speaker. You have ones with a short gap and a long coil, and that's sort of how you get your excursion. You have a long gap and a short coil. Well, they actually came up with a system that has multiple gaps where you're commutating between them. And what happens is that... Electrically commutating? Uh, yeah. Oh, and, so, and so part of the coil is working, and then it's, when it moves, it switches to another part? Well, the, there are, there's another company that actually came up with that. Uh, but this is just very simply, um, you know, that as you start to lose turns out of one gap, you're gaining into another gap. So it's like multiple fingers. So it's a little different than something like an electrical motor where there's different polarities of, of the different gaps and things like that. But it's sort of from that concept of like a, uh, an electrical uh, rotary motor. And um, so they, there's, you know, there's positives and negatives to all these approaches. The, the long gap short coil thing is the most common because it's the most efficient, it's the least expensive. But uh, this this multi-gap approach is really great, and it, it, it scales from large subwoofers down to mid-ranges. And, you know, you, you end up, the most common implementation is, is two gaps. So you end up with a really broad symmetrical motor force over excursion, and that solves, that's the number one issue in woofer distortion at low frequencies. Is that what you did on the new PSR? Yeah, speaker? yeah. So we, we did that, and it also, because you have this rebate between the two gaps, it's a really convenient place to put a Faraday ring, and a Faraday ring or, or, or shorting ring also addresses kind of one of the secondary aspects of, of distortion, which is, um, you know, that there's dynamic offset. You actually, the woofer will suck in uh, under excursion and actually not move around its center point and um, also have, you know, harmonic distortion from uh, eddy currents and flux modulation, these other things we talked about in the, in the other video. So, you know, those two technologies are sort of a big part of, of the woofer design. You know, for the third uh, source of distortion in woofers, which is compliance versus excursion, we're actually doing dual mirror image spiders that are what are called a progressive profile. So normally uh, the spider is that cloth corrugated piece that provides most of the restoring force in a speaker. So we did a custom spider assembly that um, is symmetrical in both directions. That's actually one of the problems with woofers is they can a lot of times push more than they can pull. Mm -hmm. 
uh, there, there are these asymmetries. So having this symmetrical suspension in there, um, symmetrical, you know, wide excursion motor, and then this, um, these shorting ring Faraday rings are in all of the woofers that we've been doing. And uh, that's kind of, that, <clears throat> you know, is the core of the magnet system. And then for the, you know, the moving system, we're just, you know, choosing cones, you know, for the application. So for woofers at low frequency, having something, you know, very stiff is important. So. But you're also tuning it for efficiency. I see, yeah. you know, you're trying to get the, the mass of the cone down oh, to sure. where you want and then match it with the motor force. And yeah, it's a balancing act, you know, with woofers where, um, you know, if you want to make a small box woofer, having higher mass and higher motor force, uh, you know, to force it low for a given um, enclosure size is important where if you're looking for efficiency and you can go the opposite direction where you back off on the mass and and um, you know you know motor, motor force scales with that to a degree to keep the base extension where you want it so it's a it's a balancing act you know we're using those parameters and resonance and and all of those things to our advantage and it's it's kind of um, you know woofers are like it's like a recipe I mean we're not inventing the woofer but but it's uh, you know you're tweaking the elements of the recipe to make something uh, you know you're really tailoring good it tailoring to exactly it exactly what we want in our, in our speaker. Yeah, and that's that's different than what some manufacturers do. There are um, you know some really great woofer manufacturers uh, in the world, and they will take a stock model and then tweak certain parts of the parameters. Um, you know, we're sort of back calculating from okay, here's the form we want. You know, what what's going to be the optimum element to put in there and so it's it's nice to be able to start from a clean sheet of paper like that sometimes because you can really get it dialed well we're excited to see when the world sees these speakers it's going to be cool yeah, right? me too. thanks chris thank you